Hello, congregation, family, and friends. I pray that all is well with you. Uh, welcome to this Sunday message. You know, I like to always start, not all the time, but a lot of times, I like to start these messages with a question. Are you a comfortable person in sharing the gospel, or are you uncomfortable doing that? Maybe you're somewhere in the middle. And what I want to talk to you about today is actually sharing the gospel. Because we have a command from the Lord Jesus. We have a mandate from Jesus where we must share the gospel. Now, before you get alarmed or before uh, you start thinking that you're not qualified, let me just say up front. First of all, we need to understand what the gospel is. The word gospel just means message. And the gospel of Jesus Christ, as you often hear me say, that I preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, is very simply the message that Jesus preached. It's what he taught. And we can read that through the four gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so, very simply, don't let the word gospel, you know, uh, overwhelm you. Gospel simply means message. Now, if you are a true believer and God has saved you, then you already understand the gospel. You already understand what Jesus did for you in taking your sins on upon the cross at Calvary. And if you are a true believer, then all of your sins, past, present, and future, have been forgiven. You already have a testimony to give. And so in this message, when I'm talking about sharing the gospel, I want us to focus on our individual efforts to go out and share the gospel with others. Now, I know some of you may be saying, well, wait a minute, I I'm an introvert. Uh, I'm not a vocal person. How am I going to go out and share the gospel? Or I'm not qualified. Or I didn't go to seminary. And there's all kinds of excuses that we can use. Well, let me just put your mind at rest. You do not need to be a Bible scholar to preach the gospel. You do not need a lot of fancy letters after your name to be able to share the gospel with someone. You do not have to go to seminary or Bible college or any of that to be able to share the gospel. All of us have an ability to share the gospel with other people. And really our priority should be actually sharing the gospel, getting it out there. Our burden should be for our fellow men and women, our fellow human beings around the world, in our circle of influence, in our families, among our friends, those people who have either not heard the gospel or they previously have rejected the gospel, and we have an opportunity to bring the gospel to them. And so we have to really face the fact that God has told us in several places in Scripture, and if you have your Bibles with you, we're going to actually be looking at a, a, something in Romans chapter 1. But if you're taking notes, let me also give you this. Matthew 28, the last three verses, is what's known as the Great Commission. This is where Jesus told his followers, his disciples, to go out and make disciples, go into every nation and preach the gospel and share the gospel. And that's where missionaries come from. Maybe you know someone. Maybe you were a missionary. Maybe you are as you're looking at this. Maybe God has appointed you to a certain land, to a certain people, to a certain culture to spread the gospel. Then you're sharing the gospel through missionary work. The bottom line is this, and this has been a burden on my heart for the last couple of days as, as I see the events that are happening around us. As each day, now listen, each day that passes, is one day closer to Jesus returning. Did you hear me? Every day that passes by is one day closer to Jesus coming back. He could be back tomorrow. He could be back in a thousand years. He could be back in a million years. We don't know. The bottom line is this. What are you and I doing about sharing the gospel? How are we doing that? What you're watching right now, these broadcasts that I do, this is one way that I share the gospel. And many of you I talk to privately on, on direct message. We talk offline. I'm sharing the gospel with you that way. When I travel to local churches and I preach in their pulpits, I'm sharing the gospel that way. Raising my family, raising my children, and the influence that I have among family and friends and coworkers, I share the gospel. We all have opportunities to share the gospel, but sometimes we get a little gun shy. I mean, think of it. If Jesus saved you from an eternity in hell, if all of your sins are forgiven, 
Why would you not want to share that? It's the greatest news you could ever bring someone. It is by far the greatest message that could ever be told anyone. No matter what kind of good news you could give someone, the greatest news is what Jesus did for you. And so what you're doing in sharing the gospel is essentially just giving your testimony. You're sharing with other people what God did for you, what he's done in your life, how you went from sinner to saved, how you went from living a life of rebellion to living a life of obedience, living a dirty life to a life of holiness, living a life of being a rebel to a life of being a servant. You see, we're told not only in Matthew 28, but we're told in Mark 16 to go out and share the gospel with others. And I also direct you to a path, although we don't have time to look at it right now. It's in Matthew chapter 10. Do you remember when he gathered his disciples and he was going to send them out? And I encourage you to read this account in Matthew chapter 10. He sends out his disciples, but beforehand he warns them. And he says, some of you are going to be arrested. Some of you will be persecuted. And you are going to be harassed by certain people. I'm paraphrasing. But when you go into these cities and when you go into these towns and when you go into these homes, some of these people are going to accept you and other people are going to reject you. Jesus is telling us up front that sharing the gospel, some people are going to respond and some people aren't. We need to know that going in. Let me move this out of the way. Some people know that already going in. We should know that already going in, that there are some people that will listen some people that will be appreciative of what we're sharing and other people that will flat out turn us down, say they're not interested. I've had all kinds of reaction in my life over my years as a Christian. I am sure you too have had the same kind of reactions. Perhaps you've seen people get saved as a witness of what you've been able to share with them. Maybe other people have totally walked away. Maybe they've even died without Jesus and that would be tragic. Okay, so here's... Here's, here's what Jesus was saying in Matthew chapter 10. He's saying, no matter where you go, there will be some that will accept you and some that won't accept you. He says, but if a house or a city or a town does not accept you, then shake the dust, clean the dust off your feet and keep moving. And in an historical context, without getting too deep, essentially there was something about this shaking the dust off your feet it's not just because the roads back then were dusty and they weren't the, the highly paved roads and highways that we have now that's not really what jesus was talking about what he was talking about is when when jews went into the samaritan areas when they went into the greek areas the other nations they considered their ground to be unclean it was dirty it was not the holy land and so Jesus was saying, if you visit these towns, if you go there and they reject you, shake that dust off your feet before you come back into the Holy Land. That's what it meant in the historical context, very briefly. But I think we can apply that to our lives today when Jesus talks about shaking the dust off our feet. For instance, I'll give you an example because I like to use examples from my life. Many, many years ago, I, I, I'm sure I've shared this before. Many, many years ago, I was working in a job. And there was a, a man there that worked with me who was an atheist. I mean, a diehard atheist. Had no interest in God, did not believe in God, wanted nothing to do with the Bible. However, he also knew from my testimony and from my comportment and, 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 and how I uh, shared my faith with others, he knew that I was a Christian. And so one day after work, he approached me and he said, uh, I'd like to have a discussion with you. Uh, regarding Christianity, and he identified himself as an atheist. He said, I'd like to actually hear what it is you believe. Now, I thought that that was an open door, and maybe it was. It was an open door for he and I to have a dialogue. We had a series of discussions over the next couple of weeks because we worked together. We'd stay after work, and we would discuss certain things, certain facets of the Bible. At the end of all these talks, he did not become a Christian, and I did not become an atheist. At the end, we were able to shake hands, we were able to work together, but neither one of us switched our positions. I certainly wasn't going to disavow Jesus and give up Christianity, but he also wasn't compelled or led or, or felt a need to embrace Jesus and Christianity. Not soon after that, 
he left the job. I have no idea where he went. Uh, we lost contact. So I don't even know where he is to this day. I would like to think that somewhere along the way he came to truth. I'd like to think that maybe I had a small part in opening the door for him. But suppose I didn't share the gospel with him. Suppose I had taken that opportunity and said, no, I'm not interested. You're an atheist. I don't want to deal with you. Suppose I took that and I closed the door right away and did not have a chance to witness to him and minister to him and show him from the scriptures why I believe Jesus is the Messiah. Suppose I did that. Now I've lost an opportunity to share the gospel. How many times in your life and in my life have we had opportunities and we just didn't do it? Why? What stopped us? As I said earlier, sometimes it could be because we don't feel we're educated enough. We don't talk well enough. We're not qualified. We come up with all kinds of excuses, but then it gets even worse. I didn't have time. I didn't want to intrude. It goes on and on, and we make excuses. Well, I don't see anywhere in Scripture where we're allowed or permitted to make excuses. If God saves us, we have an obligation to share. Not everyone is going to be raised up to be a worldwide famous preacher, someone like Billy Graham, for instance. Not everyone is called to do that. Some people are called to just serve in small little local churches. And that's all they're called to do. Some are called into the mission field. Some are called to the prayer closet. Some are called to music ministry. Some are called to nursing homes and hospital ministry. Some are called into the funeral ministry. Believe it or not, that is a ministry where you can minister to people. I've done it, where you actually preside over a funeral service. But as you are also paying respects to the deceased, you also have an opportunity to minister to people who are still alive who may need Jesus. I've had many opportunities over my years in ministry to be able to witness the, the love of Jesus Christ and the fact that he is the only way into heaven right in front of a body right in front of someone who was laying in their casket. Because what better time is there to share the gospel than when people are grieving or people are wondering if the person that they're laying to rest was truly saved, etc. There's many different ways to share the gospel. And as I was thinking about this earlier today, I said, Lord, there's so many places in, in, in Scripture that I can go to share the gospel. So many examples that Jesus showed us, so many commands that he gave us. But one verse really stuck out at me. And if you have your Bibles open, or if you're taking notes, we are in Romans chapter 1, the great letter of Paul to the Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Now, you know, Paul, before he became the apostle Paul, was Saul of Tarsus. He was a persecutor of Christians. He put Christians in jail. He was on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 8 with papers in his hand that gave him permission to arrest Christian men and Christian women and persecute them. In Acts 7, I believe, he witnessed the stoning of Stephen, and he endorsed it, and he was fine with it until God got a hold of him in Acts chapter 9 and struck him down on the Damascus road and blinded him. And when he, three days later, when Ananias laid his hands on him, the scales fell off his eyes, the Bible says, and he suddenly could see. But God had told Ananias, I'm going to show Paul how much he's going to suffer for me. And there's practically no one else that suffered more outside of Jesus than the apostle Paul during biblical times. He went through a lot of things. And in spite of all of that, did he ever stop sharing the gospel? No, he didn't. One of his most compelling statements is here in Romans 1, verse 16. You probably already know this if you do any kind of Bible study or Bible reading. Here's what he says. Let's go back to verse 15. So for my part, I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For it is in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, by the righteous man shall live by faith. But the righteous man shall live by faith. I want to focus really 
on his desire. See, now when Paul wrote the letter to the Romans, he was not in Rome yet. He was hoping to get there. He was reaching out to them. And he was saying, I am eager to preach this gospel to you that already in Rome. I want to share the good news of the gospel with you. Now, Paul was a uh, obviously a very gifted preacher. All he got to do is read through his letters and read through the books that he wrote in the New Testament to realize that he was second to none. Next to Jesus, there was no other greater preacher than Paul. That is my opinion. Even greater than Peter, greater than John. Paul had tremendous insight, but he also paid a price for it. And sometimes that makes us gun shy. Sometimes we're afraid, aren't we? Let's admit it. Sometimes we're afraid of the reaction people are going to give us. Sometimes we may be afraid of being called a Jesus freak, a Bible thumper, a religious fanatic, some kind of religious nut. I've been called all of those and worse. Has it stopped me from sharing the gospel? No, because not just because I'm a preacher, not just because I'm a Bible teacher, not just because I'm a pastor, because I'm a Christian because I'm a born again Christian and I realize that every minute that goes by, every hour that goes by, every day that passes, there are hundreds of thousands of people around the world who are dying, the majority of which are going into a godless eternity. What are we doing about that? That, that? that should be a priority at the very top of our list, sharing the gospel with other people, sharing what Jesus did for us. And here we have Paul, who is writing this letter to the Romans with hope of getting there and being there one day. And if you read the book of Acts, he winds up in Rome. That's where he faces Caesar. He winds up in Rome. He loses his life in Rome. But look what he says here in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. What gospel? The gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel that I preach, the gospel that Paul preaches, the gospel hopefully that every true born-again Christian preaches. The gospel of Jesus Christ. We preach what Jesus preached. No more, no less. We don't sugarcoat the gospel. We don't, we don't change it around. We don't take out the stinging parts. We preach the gospel exactly as Jesus preached it. Good, bad, or indifferent. Whether it makes you feel good, whether it convicts you, whether it gets you angry. Jesus had all of those kind of reactions. He had disciples that followed him. He also had Pharisees and Sadducees that wanted to kill him and plotted his death. And then there were people in the middle that sometimes followed him and sometimes walked away. Read the story when he fed the 5,000 and you read that chapter and, oh, yes, there's plenty of people there to eat the physical bread. When he started talking about other things, they left him because he didn't have physical things to give him anymore. You got those wishy-washy people. They're there today. They're not there tomorrow. We went across all of those. And many of us were in one of those states too. Maybe one of us at one time was kind of wishy-washy. One day we believe in Jesus. One day we don't. But I want you to see what Paul is talking about. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. He's not ashamed. He knows what Jesus did for him. And he knows that every person... Every person is a soul that needs saving. It doesn't matter if you like the person or if you even know the person or what kind of history you have with the person. As born-again Christians, you and I have the obligation to pray for those people, to share the gospel with those people, if at all possible. Paul is saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why is he not ashamed of the gospel? Here's the reason. For it is the power of God for salvation. That's why he's not ashamed of the gospel. That's why you and I should not be ashamed or afraid of the gospel or to share it with someone else. Why? Because it's through the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the only way to salvation. Did you hear me? It's the only way to salvation. Jesus said, John 14, 6, I quote it all the time. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There's no other way into heaven except through Jesus Christ. That is the very foundation of the gospel. If you say nothing else to someone, if you say that to them, Jesus Christ is the way to heaven. And if you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you have the gift of eternal life. Your sins are forgiven. And when you leave this earth, you go to live and reign with Christ in heaven. To be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord, the Bible says. That's is the gospel and it's that simple and it's that 
easy to share the gospel. Now, our own testimony can flesh that out and what Jesus specifically did in our life, yes. But the bottom line is the gospel is that we get to heaven through Jesus Christ no other way. No other way. That's why he talks about in the Sermon on the Mount that there's a narrow road and there's a wide road. A narrow gate and a wide gate. He says in the wide gate, there's going to be many that's going to be on that road. It's going to reach the wide gate. And it's wide because many people are going through it. He says, but I want you to seek the narrow gate. Few be there to find it. What is Jesus telling us in that, in that illustration? There's few people that are going to come to truth. Most people are not. But you and I still have an obligation, a mandate, a command from God to share the gospel, to not be ashamed of it, to not be embarrassed by it, and to not be afraid of what people's reaction is going to be. So look, this is what Paul was up against. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for this is the power of God for salvation. To who? Continues on. To everyone who believes. Everyone. But then he distinguishes two particular peoples. He says to the Jew first and also to the Greeks. Now, the Greeks simply is another word for the word Gentiles, which means anybody who did not come through Jewish blood. So you have the Jewish nation, the, the Jewish people, and then you have the Greeks, i.e. Gentiles, i.e. the rest of the nations. And so when he's talking about to the Jew first and to the Gentiles, he's talking about the entire world. The gospel is involved it says it is the power of god for salvation to everyone who believes that means me sitting here in little outside of chicago illinois and it means you to wherever it is you are listening to this broadcast whether you're here live with me right now or you're watching this on delay the gospel is meant for you also it's meant for every nation around the world every people every tongue every culture it's for everyone <clears throat> Excuse me. It's for everyone who believes. Now, when you think about your circle of your family, your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors, the people that you run into in your daily comings and goings, maybe local shopkeepers or whatever the case may be, how many of those people who are not presently believers have you tried to reach out and just share the gospel. I'm not talking about dragging them off to a church. I'm not talking about sitting them down and going through theology, through the Bible. I'm talking about simply sharing the gospel, simply sharing your faith. This is what Jesus did for me. Jesus can do the same for you. And we're not to be ashamed, and we're not to be afraid, and we're, and we're not to let fear take over. We have to understand, some people will accept what we're saying. Some people won't. That is just a simple fact. I have friends on social media and in real life who no longer deal with me. They've made it clear that because of what I believe and because of what I preach and because of what I teach, they cannot and will not be associated with me. Now, they've heard the gospel. They know the truth. But they choose not to be involved with me. And that's okay. See, if I had real thin skin, and sometimes we all do, don't we? If I had real thin skin, it would trouble me. But I'll tell you what troubles me more than anything else, and it should trouble you too. For every person who rejects Jesus, every person who rejects the gospel, every person who leaves this world, now hear me, every person who leaves this world without Jesus as their Lord and Savior will wind up in hell. Now, some people don't want to hear that. That's harsh, Pastor. That's, oh, who talks about hell anymore? You scare people away. I won't be doing my job. I won't be fulfilling my calling if I don't preach the whole counsel of God. That's all of it. Jesus talked about hell. We need to talk about hell. If we understand the urgency of what's happening here, you all know people, and I've known people that have died in an unsafe state. I certainly have. I know people that have left this world not acknowledging Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Once that happens, they are beyond reaching. Do you understand that? 
Once they leave this world, they cannot be reached again. They cannot be standing before God on judgment day and suddenly decide they want to believe in Jesus. The time to believe in Jesus, the time to hear the gospel, the time to share the gospel is on this side of the grave. It's as long as we have a breath in our body. And what I'm trying to get you to understand and myself is we need to step up our game. No matter what you've been doing, forget about how people are going to react to you. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't let fear overtake you. If you care about your family and your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors, whoever, if you care about that person down on the corner, if you care about your fellow human beings, you will do your part, as I do my part, to share the gospel with as many people as we possibly can. That's what God has called us to do. And as I said earlier, you don't need to be a pastor, don't need to be a preacher, don't need to be a Bible teacher, don't need to go to college. All you have to do is if you understand what Jesus did for you, turn around and share it with someone else. It's actually simple. 1 John 5 verse 12 says this, and this is the essence of the gospel. It says, he who has the Son of God has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. 1 John chapter 5 verse 12. That in one verse is the gospel. If you have Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. That is more precious than any food, than any amount of money, than any relationship, anything we can have in this world is knowing that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. He paid the price on Calvary for us and that when we die, because we have the Son, we have life. We have eternal life. But if we don't have the Son, we don't have eternal life. What happens is we wind up in eternal damnation. We all have a choice. All of us have a choice. We can accept Jesus or we can reject Jesus. All of us are going to one place or another when we die, either heaven or hell. There is no other place. It's one of the two places. And what we decide in this world decides where we're going to spend eternity. You and I have an obligation to not be ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and to the Greek. Who are you reaching today with the gospel? Who are you going to reach tomorrow with the gospel? Who is God laying on your heart right now as I'm speaking that you need to reach out and share the gospel with? There is somebody, maybe there's many people, but you have an obligation like I have an obligation. We have a mandate, a command from God to share the gospel. Let's do nothing less than our very best in reaching as many people as we can with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. If it has, please feel free to share it. Isaiah 55 11 says, God's word does not return void. It reaches all those people he intends it to reach. So if it reached you today, if you're listening to this today, if you were convicted of this today, if you know someone that needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, get this message out to them. Let's get this word of God out. Let's share the gospel. The other thing I would ask, I threw a lot of scripture at you today. Be a faithful and diligent Berean. Acts 17, 11 says that the Bereans were more noble than others. They weren't smarter. They weren't nicer. They didn't have more money. They weren't more economically blessed. It says in Acts 17, 11, that they received the word as it was preached to them with all readiness, with all eagerness. They had open hearts, open minds. They wanted to hear the word that Paul was preaching to them. But they didn't stop there. And thank goodness they didn't. Because they gave us the way to understand truth. Not only did they listen to the gospel, but then they searched the scriptures daily. It says daily, look it up. They searched the scriptures every single day to make sure what they were hearing was true. I encourage you, do the same thing. Whether it's me, someone you watch on Christian television, someone you listen to on radio, someone out here on social media, maybe you're reading the latest book from your favorite Christian author. Maybe you go to a local church. Maybe you attend a Bible study. However you are being fed the word, you owe it to yourself to be a faithful and diligent Berean. Just like our church family, we call ourselves Bereans for life because we're in the scriptures every day to make sure that what we're hearing is true. I still do it, and I will continue to do it 30 plus years after God called me to preach, and I still have people that I listen to, certain gifted men that I, I think are very, very gifted and well-versed in scripture, and I still look up to make sure what I'm hearing is true. You should do no less. 
Uh, it's unfortunate, but even in these last days, there's a lot of false prophecy out here. There are false prophets. There are false Bible teachers. Some are doing it deliberately to enrich themselves. Some are doing it for pers personal grandeur. Uh, some people are just teaching because they don't know any better. They're not well-versed enough. But the more you study scripture, the more you understand what the Bible says, the more you'll be able to recognize what is true and what isn't. Let me also ask you, would you please keep this ministry in your prayers? We are going through some times of transition right now. We have to make some hard decisions as far as the future of the ministry goes and how we can keep going. Um, I'm one of those preachers. If you've watched me, I don't sugarcoat anything. I'm kind of loud. and <laughs> Some people think I'm obnoxious. But I believe in preaching the truth with passion and preaching the truth to the best of my ability. Because of that, we're always under attack. Satan is either attacking the broadcast or attacking it right now. He's, he's, he's killing us financially right now. And so would you please pray that I stay bold, that my voice stays strong, that I stay on the front lines, no quit, no retreat, no backing up. There's no stopping the gospel here. And whatever platform I can use and whichever way I can preach the gospel, I'm going to preach and share the gospel with others. But Satan would love nothing better than to shut the ministry down and be done with us. Please pray for that fortification. Please pray that God would give us grace and mercy to continue going if it be his will. And lastly, if, if God leads you to support us financially, we sure could use it. Every ministry needs money to survive. Now, I'm not one of those preachers who say you have to give a tithe, you have to give first fruits. That's between you and God, really. I could teach on that. But that's between you and God. You don't have to write a check and sow a seed to get a word. <laughs> you know, that's that doesn't happen here. You don't have to write a check and sow a seed so you hear the latest prophecy of the month. That's not the way it works here. We don't pay for Bible stuff. We don't pay to give you prophecy and so on. That is not how that works. But if God leads you to support us financially, we certainly could use it. And it goes right back into doing all the ministry things we need to do. You could do it one of two ways, either on our website, livinginharmonyministries.org, livinginharmonyministries.org, or right through Facebook Messenger. It's quick, it's easy, it takes less than a minute. Your donation or offering is safe and secure. We send you receipts for everything. And anything that we receive goes right back into the ministry. Keep us on the air. Keep us traveling. Keep us doing what we need to do for God. But I leave that between you and God. Pray about it, please. Thank you for joining with me for this uh, Sunday message. Go out and share the gospel. Thanks for being with me. God bless you.